What's good, peeps? Thanks always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. All right, let's do this. Uh, this week in boxing, episode seven, eight, seven, seven. Uh, I feel like a fucking school teacher about to mark an exam with this pen and paper. Before we start, I just want to quickly say a big, big thank you uh, to everyone that signed up to the Patreon account. Um, shocked. Can't lie to you. Shocked and surprised. So thank you very, very much. All right, let's get to the results. That is just results. Last week, I only had Linares. That's just results. And that's not everything. That's crazy. Um, crazy. I think there were fight cards Friday, Saturday. And there's even a fight card tonight, which I obviously won't talk about until next week. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, all right, the main one, the one that everyone was looking forward to, Tyson Fury beat Otto Wallin via points. Um, it wasn't the greatest performance. I've already done a video about this. Go and check out the video if you've not already seen it. Um, good performance, I thought, from Otto Wallin. I think he shocked a lot of people, including myself. Um, I did say on that video that Otto Wallen going into the fight was a guy considered top 30, top 40. There, there ain't 40 heavyweights beating Otto Wallen. I'll tell you that now. Um, he's a guy that I think is maybe just outside top 20. But very good performance. For Tyson Fury, I guess he gets the win right. Moves on to fight Deontay Wilder. Fingers crossed. February 22nd. Still not convinced that fight happens. I don't know why. Maybe not on that date. Maybe the fight happens, but maybe they look for another date. Because obviously Deontay Wilder's got Lewis Ortiz, which ain't going to be easy. That's no gimme. Um, it's strange, before the fight, um, and Ben Davison, Frank Warren, and Bob Arum were all talking about Otto Wallin, and I'm hearing his name's Wallin, not Wallin, um, was ideal preparation for Deontay Wilder. I don't know how. A slow-ish southpaw who doesn't have much pop in his punches is ideal preparation for an orthodox guy that punches like a fucking mule. Um, yeah. Don't make sense at all, that one. Um, also on that card, uh, Zapida beat Pedraza. Bit of an upset. A lot of people picked Pedraza to win that one. Um, that was always going to be a tough fight, but in the end, I guess uh, Zapida gets the win and moves on. Emmanuel Navarati stopped Juan Miguel Ilora. I'm probably butchering these names, ain't I? To retain his WBO junior featherweight strap. Navarati fought four weeks ago. Fucking hell, I'm talking about staying busy. Um, on a separate fight card, Juan Munguia stopped Patrick Alotti in four rounds. Dropped him three times. Uh, that's um, Manguia's last fight, 154 pounds. Obviously, he's going to vacate that. Move up to 160. Um, we are hearing rumours that Liam Smith versus Jesse Vargas could fight for the vacant belt on the undercard of Joshua versus Ruiz. Um, Liam Smith's getting a world title shot. Okay, cool. Uh, Carlos Cudras. Um, again, butchering that name, ain't I? Carlos Cuadras? Cudras? Um, beat um, Edges Cardenas by majority decision. That puts him kind of back in the super fly contention. Again, this is what I was talking about when I was, and I, I didn't mean to be disrespectful to um, uh, Charlie Edwards. That division, fly and super fly, sharks everywhere. Sharks everywhere. We're hearing now as well, this is separate, I was going to talk about it, but I might as well quickly mention it now, that Charlie Edwards isn't going to vacate his belt and that he is going to do the rematch with, um, I can't remember the guy's name, I can't remember the guy's name that I thought was going to go on to beat him anyway. Obviously, that got, fight, fight got stopped. Um, strange, right? Strange decision in the end. Um, but yeah, they're going to re redo that. So um, good luck to Charlie Edwards. Talking about Charlie, his brother, Sonny Edwards, got the decision over Rosondo Guaranares. Um, he gets the IBF and WBO international belts as such. Um, also on that card, Cody Davis, um, unbeaten fighter, trained by Gavin Reese. He beat fellow unbeaten fighter, Zach Chelly by decision. Uh, Shakan Peters beat um, Spellman by decision. I think that was for the English light heavyweight belt. That was a card, I think that was at, I think it was at York Hall, Bethnal Green. I'm pointing like that because, again, it's not that far away from here. Um, Friday, Devin Haney uh, pretty much destroyed Abdullayev. Um, I'm hearing that Abdullayev has got a broken orbital bone. Man, those injuries. Um, so he has to stay in the USA. He can't travel back to Russia for 10 days. Um, that fight as well was for the WBC interim belt. Um, strange belt. It's almost like belt creating. Like, why do you have an interim belt when there's nothing wrong with the current champion? Normally, when you think of an interim belt, you think of um, a champion unable to fight, right? Maybe because of injury or whatever, or some sort of law or legal suit. And, you know, creating, a, creating an interim belt because the champion's unable to fight. The champion is Lomachenko. Just make him mandatory. Why have to give him a belt? It's like belt creation. Uh, Devin Haney has called out Lomachenko, calling him Nomachenko. 
Not that I've over, I've never known Lomachenko to duck a fight. Uh, I like Devin Haney, but he's not ready for that one. Um, Michael Hunter dropped an indecision. Sergei Kuzman. I'm just going to do a video on Hunter. Like, where is he in your rankings? Is he a top 15? Um, do you think he's a real threat to um, the other heavyweights? Or the top heavyweights, sorry? He's undersized, clearly. He's put on a bit of weight, which just looks like fat, if I'm honest with you. Um, and he's a decent boxer. I don't know if he's a, a highly skilled boxer. He's a decent boxer. So because of that, I'm going to say he's not a threat to the top guys. For example, Usyk's undersized, but Usyk's very skilled. Hence why we say Usyk's a threat. Hunter's undersized and not as skilled. So I still think he's a threat. I still think he'll give any of the top guys a good fight, but I don't think he's a threat to them. I don't think. Amanda Serrano uh, beat Heather Hardy. Um, I'm not even quite sure what weight this is at because Serrano fucking is going like that and up and down and up and down with weights. But regardless, uh, she got the decision. I'm not quite sure what's next. I don't even know what weight. I was going to say Katie Taylor, but I don't even know what weight this fight was at, which is bad upon my part. I should have checked. But um, I did see a picture where she was holding like fucking seven belts. That was fucking ridiculous. Seven belts. So um, good luck to her and whatever she does next. Um, Ryan Garcia, who was supposed to fight on the Manguia card, um, his opponent um, got arrested. His opponent got arrested the day of the weigh-in, uh, which is a bit of a joke. Uh, so that fight obviously was off, and according to sources, he refused a late replacement. Golden Boy said they offered him a late replacement, and Team Garcia saying they refused it, or something like that anyway. Um, he should refuse it. I think Ryan Garcia is too much of a hot prospect to take a fight against a risky guy um, on one day's notice. You don't do that. that that's you, Those are things you don't do. I remember John Jones in the UFC was asked to do the same thing. I think he was supposed to fight Chel Sonnen, someone he could easily run through on late notice. And he said no. He said no, so they had to scrap the whole card. Um, you, you don't do late replacement fights. If you've been studying for fighter A, you don't take the risk and, and fight fighter B. You just don't do that. Um, no way. Any other fight results? That's it. I think we're done. There was a lot more fights, but those are the main ones. Um, fight announcement. We spoke about this last week, but now it's 110% confirmed. Uh, Canelo versus Kovalev, November 2nd. I was um, in the lead up. I've done a few videos about this and I was asking why can't the fight be moved another week, another two weeks. And obviously the reason being is that um, the zone want different signups for different months. So obviously we have uh, Joshua Ruiz is December 7th. So obviously, if Canelo versus Kovalev was a couple more weeks in advance, say, for example, I don't know, November 7th, just as an example, no, sorry, November 9th, then whoever signed up for Canelo Kovalev will also get Joshua Ruiz for free. And they don't want that. They want it to be different signups. Smart, tricky bastards. So that fight obviously goes down uh, November 2nd. Um, there's been so much contract issues with that fight. An example of that is that if Sergei Kovalev wins... He goes back to fighting with ESPN. If he loses, it's in the contract that he gets two fights, providing that he still wants to fight with the zone, which is strange. Um, yeah, Eric Gomez, president of Golden Boy, has said there have been so many rats and vultures trying to get involved in negotiations for this fight. He said it was more difficult to make this fight than it was to make Golovkin Canelo 2, which was difficult. We know about that. Um, I'm guessing there's just a lot of people that. Once it comes to big money, you get a lot of managers that come out of the woodwork, kind of sub-promoters, co-promoters that all want a bit of the pie. So yeah, that fight was tough to make, but it does go down November 2nd. I do favour Canelo, but I mean, it's an intriguing fight, you know. Again, Canelo, when he stepped up against top opposition, hasn't got rid of them. When he stepped up, even to guys, apart from, I mean, bigger guys. I know Rocky Fielding, he beat Rocky Fielding, but move on from that. I'm talking Danny Jacobs, GGG. Um, Julio Cesar Chavez, bigger guys, hasn't got rid of them. I don't think this version of Kovalev is as durable as those guys, but again, intriguing fight. Some UK news, Martin Murray's back uh, November 15th in Liverpool. He'll be in a card uh, put on by MTK. MTK are fucking doing things, boy, doing things. Uh, the card will be headlined by Rocky Fielding. We're not sure of the opponents yet, but um, decent card with Martin Murray and Rocky Fielding on. Uh, very decent card. Um, another Brit, uh, Dave Allen is off the Ritson Robbie Davis Jr. card. I thought it was a bit crazy for him to even be on it, but now he's off it. Um, I don't know if you guys know, if you follow him on social media, he seems to have, I don't know, stopped or blocked his Twitter account again. Um, he's clearly going through some sort of mental health depression and hope he gets sorted out. Um, 
yeah, it's one of those stories that doesn't look like it's going to end well. Um, so I hope that people around him can get around him and offer him advice. Because again, this guy is, I don't know, sometimes he's extremely jovial and happy with life. And then sometimes he's completely down and does things like switch his Twitter off. Um, we all go through shit, but he goes through shit. Um, and it's noticed, obviously, because of his, um, because of who he is. So fingers crossed he gets himself sorted. And I want to see him get himself sorted before he gets himself in the boxing ring. Um, hopefully he can do that. Bob Arum has spoken again. And Bob Arum has spoken a lot about this, to be fair, about the Spence versus Crawford fight. It only seems like the fight is being spoken about by um, Crawford and Bob Arum. Obviously, Spence has got the fight with Porter coming up, so he has to be focused on that. But for the last sort of eight months, I've seen so many things with Bob Arum saying he wants to make this fight. Obviously, he's been in conversations with um, Al Heyman with regards to the Fury versus Wilder fight. So they're definitely in conversations. And he's saying he doesn't understand why there can't be more cross-promotions. Uh, Bob Arum's a, a kind of funny character. He obviously done a cross-promotion recently with Eddie Hearn. Then in separate interviews, he's openly dissed Eddie Hearn. But at least he's working with Eddie Hearn. At least Sky are working with The Zone and working with ESPN. So it can happen. So um, fingers crossed it happens. I think Crawford has got a fight coming up against his mandatory, a guy that no one really knows. Crawford clearly isn't happy. Um, and I think Bob Arum's saying these things out in the public, almost just to kind of reassure Crawford that he is trying to make the fight. Um, whether or not the fight happens is another thing. Um, a fight that definitely is happening, I spoke about it last week, I've spoken about it a lot recently, is Berta Beer versus uh, Vozdik, um, the IBF champion versus the WBC champion. The face-to-face -face was this week, fucking hell. I mean, it might not get a lot of attention this fight, but that is potentially fight of the year fight of the year. I do like Vozdik. He's different. I know people have been making the comparisons because he's from Ukraine and obviously I think he works sometimes alongside Usyk and Lomachenko. He doesn't fight like them. Their style is completely different, but he can fight. But so can Berta Biev. And that's like brick versus fucking brick. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the stare down, but Berta Biev looked like a fucking machine. I mean, I make nothing of stare downs, but Vozdik blinked first. Vozdik blinked fucking first. Let's talk about Jarrell Miller and let's keep it brief. This little fat fuck is getting a lot of attention. Did you guys see the photo of him and Eddie Hearn all smiling? Made my blood boil, that one. Um, I don't know why, but it did make my blood boil. Um, obviously, he's back in about three weeks. I think he's um, suspension's up. Um, Anthony Joshua even said he would fight him, right? Um, Frank Warren said he would make the Joe Joyce Jarrell Miller fight in a heartbeat. He's a wanted man again. He's a wanted man. I don't, as much as I said... The photo of him and Eddie Hearn makes my blood boil. I don't blame the promoters, right? I mean, they're going to book him. Obviously, he's a name. Um, it doesn't seem as though what's happened has caused him too much damage, right? People still want to see him fight. So I don't blame Frank Warren or Eddie Hearn for even booking him or making him fight a bame. Um, I blame the, the governing bodies. I blame the sanctioning bodies. They're the ones that have an opportunity to issue longer bans. So no blame whatsoever, whatsoever sorry, uh, towards Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren. Um, I guess if I was a promoter, I'd probably be doing the same fucking thing. Uh, Rob McCracken was in the news this week. I've made a couple of videos talking about it. Um, he said in an interview, I think it was with Talk Sport, that he knew Joshua was concussed during that fight. Um, a lot of people have been outraged. Um, and I said, look, this is the wrong sport to be outraged in. But in fairness, um, it is about fighter safety, right? Uh, the referee is there to protect the fighter. You hear that all times. Um, and your trainer, someone that you have been with, someone that you share kind of a personal friendship with is definitely there to protect you. So um, if Rob McCracken did notice that AJ was concussed during the fight, I don't know, he's, I guess he's under obligation, right? Under an obligation as a trainer to pull your fighter out. It's um, a question that's going to be raised. It's the question that people are asking. And I guess it's a story that's going to keep on going. Um, but I don't have any ill feelings towards Rob McCracken because of it. I just, as a fight fan, understand that that happens in fights. Uh, Nigel Benn, talking about fighter safety, uh, this one really is making my blood boil. Nigel Benn, 55 years of age, looks like he's going to fight former WBC super middleweight champion Sakio Bika. Uh, Nigel Benn hasn't fought since 1996. Um, that's 23 years ago. <laughs> Some of you watching this, and I'm guessing quite a lot of you watching this, weren't born when Nigel Benn had his last fight. Think about that. He's about to return to the ring. I think it's November um, in Manchester and he will be issued, I think, an Irish boxing license. Go figure. Um, Danny Jacobs having issues 
with his trainer, um, Andre Rosia. Um, it's about money. Always is about money with fighters and trainers. Always about money. It's not about anything else other than money. It's not about difference of opinions. It's not about this. It's not about that. It's about money. We've seen it recently with Golovkin and Abel Sanchez. Um, I do wonder if that was an issue with Dave Coldwell, Chisora. They say it was because of long distance. I say bollocks to that. But um, I'm hearing that Rosier was expecting a bit more money after the Canelo fight. Did get it. And um, they're trying to sort it out now through a third person. Interesting. Uh, some bare knuckle boxing news for all of you bare knuckle boxing fans. I am not one of them. Um, Ishe Smith, former, I think, IBF champion, 154 pounds, former contender fighter. Remember that series of contender. Fucking awesome. Awesome. Anyway, he is going to have a bare knuckle boxing match against Estevan Payan. I think that's a former, former. I want to say former boxer as well. And they're going to be on, I think it's the BKFC, obviously the same promotion that showed the um, Paulie Malinaji, Artem Loba fight. Interesting. This one I didn't really want to talk about, but fuck it, let's talk about it. It is boxing. And I guess it shows why Eddie Hearn, Matrim and Zone have got behind this. KSI Logan Paul done their press conference the other day. I've not watched it. I won't watch it just because it's not really my thing. But we're hearing that 4 million, 4 million people over social media have watched this. Their fight could do more sign-ups than Canelo versus Kovalev, yeah? And um, Ruiz versus Joshua. By the way, I've started saying Ruiz versus Joshua because Ruiz is the champion. You gotta start saying that people. I know people say Joshua Ruiz. No, it's Ruiz versus Joshua. Joshua is the contender here. All right, let's end on these couple of ones. Uh, Dillian White, um, the B sample, what's going on? We don't know what's going on. Uh, Eddie Hearn did confirm though that his hearing is in October. I'm not quite sure the date. Uh, and my question to that, and I'm gonna do more videos about this. Trust me, a lot of people are not supposed to be talking about this. People's videos are being taken down for talking about this shit, which is a joke. But, and this is the question, hopefully you guys are still watching this by the way, because I know we're kind of 20 minutes in, I think. If it didn't come out, then there wouldn't be no issue. If there, won't, if there wasn't an issue, why is there even a hearing? Does that make any sense? I, I don't understand why there's a hearing. Because if this news, which we weren't supposed to know about, didn't come out, he would have just continued fighting. So I do find it strange that there's a hearing. But I do wonder, because Eddie Hearn said something along the lines of, Eddie Hearn's very smart of his words, that um, he don't think Dylan White will fight again um, in the UK this year. See those words there, in the UK this year. Um, I do wonder if he'll fight um, in America on a, a match from show in the zone, or maybe the Josh Ruiz card. Uh, probably doubt it now, but who knows. Uh, we'll end on this one, the Derek Chisora outburst. I've done a couple of videos on it. Um, I, I, I'm with him and not with him. I don't like the way he put down Josh Taylor and Progress, because they're just... Um, very good boxers, unbeaten boxers, world champions, something he isn't. Um, yes, I get it that people tune in for heavyweights and people will tune in for you. But I thought his outburst was timed well, but I didn't like the way he attacked progress, especially considering that progress tried to stick up for himself by saying we're number one and number two, which is true, right? Number one and number two or number one and number three, however we want to look at it. Um, I do think that if... Progress and Taylor aren't on this fight card. This fight card isn't a pay-per-view. Isn't a pay-per-view. It's a normal Saturday night fight card. Um, I think their inclusion on it makes it a pay-per-view. Um, does Chisora really care about being main event? No, he just wants more money. You know, sometimes, as much as I like Chisora, you guys know I'm a big Chisora fan. Um, I don't know if he warrants more money. I'm not quite sure what he's getting paid. Um, and I'm all for fighters getting what they deserve. Um... But Chisora, apart from the Takam fight, I wouldn't call Malik Scott a big fight. He's lost all his big fights. Sometimes I think he's lucky to even be in the position he's in. Um, I do. But uh, is Chisora a pay-per-view fighter? I don't know. Is this fight a pay-per-view fight? Not for me. It's not a world title. It's two guys. Um, Parker, top 10 heavyweight, I'd still say, and Chisora, top 20. That's not a pay-per-view fight. Um, with the inclusion of Progress Taylor, it's a pay-per-view card. There isn't a pay-per-view fight on that card. Even Progress versus Taylor, for me, isn't necessarily a pay-per-view fight. So um, I thought his outburst was ill, was timed well, but I thought um, he went about it the wrong way. 
You went about it the wrong way. What do you guys think? Anyway, that's this week in boxing. Peace.